right, this is a uh, old my beer production. Oh, so delicious. That's uh, beer number one, by the way. And it's like three quarters full for all you uh, kids out there keeping count. I can prove that by showing how agile I am. Stepping on the tip of the kayak. Pull this thing up a little bit further. Yeah. Let's see what we can find. Hopefully no uh, bears or alligators. Those pine trees over there indicate a higher, drier bottom than the mangroves and the sawgrass. This stuff is actually called needle brush. And the tips are like needles. Those are actually the flowers of the plant. It's, uh, ow, very sharp. I wanted to give a shout to Kim and Leslie at EPC. We've been friends now for quite some time and when I have questions like, what do you call this stuff? They're always there with answers. Thank you guys. This would be a nice place for pants. Ow. I knew a cat once named Captain Fishy Pants. I'm not making that up. We'd call him Pants for short. Pants was a big cat. And he was super friendly. He was such a nice cat. Anyways, yeah. I hope I don't see any cats here. Like panthers or anything. And if I do, I hope that he or she is nice too. Look at that. <laughs> That's a good reason to be uh, careful and watch your step. I've still got that ingrained in me from being on a boat as long as I have. You watch your step. You don't want to slip and fall. It can ruin your cruising rather quickly. Seems to be a place to do a cooking segment. Maybe inside this fire pit. Slightly grown over. It's a good place for a fire pit, not too much above it. Look at how magical that is. That's what it is. Some sort of bush over there giving birth to little babies. <laughs> See, there's the babies. And there's mama. Huh? Again, I have Kimmy and Les at EPC to thank for teaching me what the proper name of this plant is. I didn't know what it was. I reached out to them and they told me that this is called sea myrtle, uh, as well as a bunch of other names. No matter what you're doing, if your environment is water or land or whatever, you should know the names of the things that uh, make the backdrop when you're uh, camping or fishing or whatever. Look how much wood there is for making a fire. Mm -hmm. It looks like hickory. Yep. I think I found myself a camping spot. Now with the campsite picked out, I went home, picked up some fish and a friend, and came back to start a fire and get on with the cooking section of this video. Whew, striker seen better days. Starting a fire was a piece of cake because there was plenty of dry wood around. And whoever's fire pit this was, was kind enough to leave some what looked like store-bought wood laying around. The quartered stuff like you would get at Walmart or something in a bag. That too looked like it had been here a long time. Being as dry as it was, it probably wasn't going to last too long, but that's fine. We only needed a fire for about an hour. I also needed a place to sit. So I got my camper chair out, and set it up, and tried to put it out of the smoke, <laughs> unsuccessfully. 
it's a dirty business camping but I didn't mind a little mud on my feet and my pants because this place was isolated and quiet and really nice the only other thing I needed was a hammock and I had all the tools I needed to set that up Ooh. proud of my sharpening skills <laughs> See what my rope tying skills are. <laughs> I don't think that's wide enough. You want to hack some of them little braces off? Wait, wait for it. Nope. That would have been too convenient. It's okay. I got more rope. It's just a little bit. Oh, what's the beer? Uh. Square knot. You're going to bend a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Boy Scouts. They might. Especially under weight. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'll help you get in. Oh. It shades me from the sun. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Budge. Oh, well, back to the drawing board. I got more rope. If you're amusement, I'm like a clown. <laughs> Make you laugh. <laughs> Look over here. Look over here now. Ow! It bit me. <laughs> Clamp. I can handle crabs all day long. No problems. <laughs> Freaking camera. Many twigs together. Okay. Take two. six inches off the ground. <laughs> Yay! It really is helpful to have a knife on hand at all times. And my newly found sharpening skills make all that work even better. Cool. Well, I don't know if that's gonna last, but uh, I'm ready for dinner, so let's get on that. Okay, yeah, that's a good stick. You extract some coals. Very nice. Oh yeah. Ooh, that is hot. Oof. Good. Drill over. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Smoky. Okay. Good. Yes. Good. Nice. That might be too high, but we add a little bit of that. That's really hot, dude. That's gonna work. Put my poker stick over there. And here amongst my junk. Let's see, what do I got? Stuff. You guys know that I like to make fish with a lot of lemon. I got some tin foil plates. I do have one lemon, but that's it. So I got some butter. Waterproof matches, which I don't need right now. I got salt, pepper, Old Bay, and garlic salt. I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Chad, who showed me how to do this in Georgia at a campsite. It was with a fish that we caught, kind of unexpectedly. There's a redfish fillet. Look at it. One cool thing about this is that they get to stay beautiful. And there's the sheep's head that I caught yesterday. This one's dinner size. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Getting back on the kayak and back to my roots, kind of, sort of. And it's been a while since I've done a catch and cook because for a long time, all I really knew was to fry it up. Now, I've got this beautiful, beautiful redfish filet. That there, skin side down. And if you've never had this, people call this redfish on the half shell. I don't know if it works with sheep's head, but sheep's head has a similar kind of um, skin. And I haven't scaled this, I just flayed it. And the only thing I didn't do is take the skin off. So I'm leaving it like this. You can put this right over a grill 
it'll be a little drier perhaps. I kind of watched my buddy do it this way and it was about the best fish I've ever tasted. So there it is. The fish is laid out on a piece of tin foil. It's really just that simple. And I'm gonna take some butter. Just go like that and that. And there you go. Yeah, what the hell? We're gonna use the whole thing. This is like half a stick of butter. The, the butter will find its way towards the middle and keep the outer parts from burning. You know, you take my word for it, even though I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to put a lot of garlic salt on this. My friend Chad said you just look in the cupboard and pick a whole bunch of spices and put on there whatever you like. Because uh, I called him the other day. I was like, dude, I caught a redfish. I want to do that thing you did in Georgia. Uh, and that was his response. Just grab any spices you got. Uh, I remember having butter. I didn't remember having lemon. And it was still good. I like pepper, obviously. Salt is nice. There you go. The Old Bay really gives it a bite. The older I get, the more I like a little spice on my food. And this can't be beat, just to give it that reddish color and everything. And then there's, uh, this is something I happen to have, Mrs. Dash. If you're not sure if it's gonna taste good, smell it. It's got a little bit of a lemon-esque and basil kind of hint to it, so. I thought to myself when I first did this the other day uh, that it was going to be delicious on fish, and I was right. So, um, yeah, now I just got to get this on the fire. All right, now the trick is to not drop it, I guess. So let's take it like this and not step on something sharp or anything. <laughs> and right there. It's already hissing. See that? That's plenty hot make a little barrier to keep the butter on there make a little pan and it can't be easier than that now I'm just gonna poke at it until it flakes apart and when it does it's time to eat what's really nice is that the whole campsite started smelling not only of campfire but of camping food this is gonna be so nice because I'm starting to get hungry you can see here that the fire was off to the side at no point was the food ever directly over the fire. Another thing that made this nice was having some ice cold beverages on hand. There's not much to do while the fish is cooking, except enjoy my ingenuity <laughs> and drink a beer and lay in a hammock. Oh my god. Feet. I'm sure this is not going to affect the way that the fish tastes. <laughs> I'm lying, it's going to make it taste so much better. Hmm. This kind of stuff is exactly what the doctor ordered. Lazing around during the weekend, not doing very much. Every once in a while I had to get up and push the coals that the fire made underneath the cooking grate. Oh, oh almost. Almost. Should be a little... Yeah, it's too little too firm. See, pulling it. And it's not coming apart? Not yet. Very soon. One interesting aspect that I forgot to mention earlier is that I didn't need a chair. Because the kayak that Pelican provided had a chair that I could take off and use. I do love that little plastic boat. And not just because it's the only way to get to this beautiful spot. It has been a little while. I don't know, how long do you, would you say this has been on the fire, Rich? 45 minutes. Yeah, right? I mean, it's it's been a while. But finally, I can pull it apart with my knife 
and it's still nice and soft and white all the way through yeah yeah oh yeah it's ready yum yum so we're gonna pull it off of the heat And uh, let that cool down for a second. We'll put it on a plate and hopefully not die from some sort of poison. <laughs> uh, one problem I have is that I, I <laughs> we didn't bring too much stuff. Don't think I have like a spatula or a fork or anything. I'm gonna get a knife, but how am I gonna get that onto that? <laughs> I have a machete somewhere. Now, I did this same fish the other day with uh, propane barbecue, and it looked just like this. It fell off the bone. It wasn't so primitive as this. A little dirt never hurt. Oh my god. All I do is dig into that with the machete, and I could smell the spices. Oh my god. There's some redfish. Look at that. The skin makes a perfect barrier and holds all the moisture. What a great way to cook fish. Happy to know this and even more happy to share it with you guys. There we go. That's some redfish there. And here's the sheep's head, which reacts pretty much the same way. Look at that. It's different looking. You know, that's the sheep's head skin. That's the redfish skin. It looks like all that's left is the scales. That's pretty interesting. Of course, I brought some lemon. I bought the lemon today. My philosophy is that if you catch a fish, um, it'll be because you don't have lemon. You go out and buy lemon first, it ain't gonna work. All right. So there's my plate. Rich, help yourself. You got your machete, I see? Spatula. <laughs> your spatula. <laughs> your spatula. And uh, I'm going to sit over here by my hammock. The only thing would be better. There's a little music with our dinner, but we had music. I got a little uh, wireless speaker hanging in the tree there. I've got another one hanging over here. And we've just been hanging out and doing a lot of nothing, which is pretty awesome. It's been a, it's been too long since I sat around and did nothing. Can you agree? Absolutely. Mm. Always time to do nothing. Ain't that the truth? Now you got a recipe. You know where the fish are. Go out and enjoy doing nothing. I do, I got goosebumps. It's so good. Don't need no vegetables, nothing. Just a word I wanted to throw out there when you're camping and going to places, be careful. When we had the fire going, we had a bucket with water and we're making sure that everything is completely out before we leave. And we're also going to take all the garbage with us. Uh, the fire pit, that's one of those things that seems like it's always been here. And I don't think it's hurting anything. Uh, but plastic bottles and the hammocks and ropes and all the tools and, you know, definitely the garbage. Is all coming with us you know the, the benches will stay so that you know me or somebody else can use them in the future but I definitely don't want to leave cans and things like that and if you guys are going out camping I, I think you should it's a lot of fun but you know don't leave a lot of trash behind just try to be responsible thanks